Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for choosing to watch my video. In this video, we're going to be talking about Esther Hicks and the impact that she has had on my life. I heard of her on while scrolling on TikTok. Actually, I think I stumbled upon a video that had somebody who said that their best book that changed their life was Ask and It Is Given. And that was the first time I ever heard about Esther Hicks. And I clicked on it and I went to find it on Audible. And back in 2017, I started reading Ask and It Is Given. Ask and It Is Given. Yeah, by Esther Hicks. I think that's the correct name. Ask and It Shall Be Given by Esther Hicks. That was the first book I ever stumbled upon by her. Her first body of work. And I just want to talk about in this video how that the knowledge and the information in that body of work actually changed my life in many ways. So stay tuned. Please like, subscribe, and stay around and watch my other videos. So one of the things, the most powerful thing that I learned from Esther immediately implemented. And the funny thing about stumbling into all this knowledge is that the first time I stumbled upon it, I practiced it and it worked. Then you, you go into the spell of forgetting. You forget the knowledge that you've gained. And you go back in the world, get distracted again. You find the book. You apply it. It works again. But the thing about it is like you have to know to use this on autopilot and not just wait till you have problems to be able to recognize your power. That's the mistake that we make most as humans. We just wait till we have a problem before we can actually learn. But we should always be constantly learning and practicing the things that we learn. So one of the most important things that I learned from her was the power of emotions and how to actually control those emotions, right? That was the most powerful thing I learned from her. And she breaks it down and she calls it vibration. Like each and every one of us have a vibration about us and that controls the things that we attract. And the remote control or the controller in this case, for your vibration as a human being will be your thoughts. And I was there like, wow, so what do you mean it's my thoughts that have been making my life feel like shit or making me feel bad about my situation or my life or my things that I'm going through, right? And that's how I thought stumbling upon it. But actually now practicing it and learning what it's talking about is the fact that when you think negatively, you feel negatively, you do negatively. <laughs> I don't know how to I know I know that's a rhyme, but it's facts. When you think negatively, you act negatively and you do negatively. You feel negatively and you act negatively, you do negatively. So that's the final stage of it. Be do have. Right? Be do have. Be do have. Right, so your thoughts, the thoughts that you keep thinking and you keep thinking over and over again are, are the thoughts that make you be, right? Because you're thinking things over again and over again in a certain personality of who you are. And if those thoughts are negative, you're going to feel negative and you're going to do negative. This is just a summary of what I learned from Esther Hicks personally in her books. Like, this is the best way I'll summarize it for somebody who wants to just get the gist of it now. And that's what I'll say is, like, your thoughts control your emotions, and your emotions will influence your actions, right? And I can give you a good example, a great example. So, if you think about, okay, you just got a bill, a payment is due. $1,000 that you do not have, you think, wow, this is scary. The first thing that consumes you is fear. And that fear, how you process it is what will affect your next decision, right? So you're going to think your old thoughts, your the old way of you thinking and be like, oh, I don't have, I don't have the money. Where can I get the money? What's, how can I get the money? You think about asking. I don't have anybody to ask. The first things that you think about will be actions out of fear right if you're in a fearful state you feel like there's no money you feel like nobody can help you you become less creative because your mind is going to be clouded with 
thoughts that are not rational or abundant wise. How do I put it? Like you're not thinking from a vibration of abundance, you're thinking from a vibration of fear, lack. So the actions that you now take after that will be different. But in a case where you say, Okay, hmm, I don't have this money. Is there possibly a way I could wait for a, make a late payment? So you shift that thought from I don't have this money to hmm, would they possibly give me extra time to make this payment? And you shift that thought to a great to a better, even better thought. It's like, okay, I can probably ask my friend to borrow me the money while I pay in the meantime then. So you now go from, oh okay, this is a place of fear. I don't have the money to increase it. Okay, I solved this problem. You took it from a place of fear to, okay, there's a way I can solve this problem. I don't have to feel the way I'm feeling right now. But it's all about the feeling because at the end of the day, life goes on. Life goes on. So if you feel the negative feelings about your situation, you just got this nasty bill of $1,000 when you don't have the money. And you soak into that and you accept that as the reality. The only thing you're doing is cutting your creativity to be able to see how you can actually solve the problem. Because I go back to this and say, if you don't know what you want, how can you ask for it? So when you're in a state of, I just got this bill and it's so much, I don't have the money. The truth is what you actually want is the money. So instead of focusing on, I don't have the money, focus on, I want to have the money. I can have this money. 1,000, you focus on what you do want, not what you don't want and don't have. So when you now think, oh, okay, this bill just came, I need $1,000. Okay, I want $1,000. Hmm. How can I get $1,000? What deal can I put in place? You start to think about, and when you now trust yourself in all these situations, like, okay, I think I should start a business. I don't want to ever be in this situation again. So, what can I do to get a thousand dollars? How would a businessman think? How would, how can I use the skills that I have to get this money? If you're thinking from a place of confidence, if you're thinking from a place of self belief, if you're thinking from a place of love and trust in yourself. Love and trust in God, love and trust in the universe that's around you. You'll be able to think in a, in, a, in a powerful way to manifest it based on your belief. Like if you believe you can walk out there and sell like crazy and make a deal in one day, you can absolutely do that and get a thousand dollars. If you think from a place of fear, then you think, oh, yeah, no, it's not possible not possible to make a thousand dollars in a day but i assure you there's somebody out there making hundreds of thousands in a day companies out there making that so it's only from your place of current beliefs that you're going to think about that and these are the little things that the hicks books teach you and taught me it taught me to control those my thoughts and my emotions so even like for instance, you fa I fail a test instead of thinking, oh, I failed. I've graduated university, by the way, but even when I think about, oh, I failed this test, I failed this midterm, I don't instantly focus on, oh, am I am I gonna fail the course? I'm gonna fail the course. Like I don't let that fear consume me. I focus on, mm, but I still have fifty percent in the final, so I have to pass the final. And that's how creative you should always be in any situation, rather than soaking and absorbing negative energy in the form of fear about the situation, transmute that energy into creative thought of how to solve the problem, right? If you've been broke for years and you've been suffering for years and you, you've not made any money, you can't keep doing the same thing you've been doing. You need to become more creative. You need to become somebody else. You need to become more confident. It's simple. Because you, somebody can give you a million dollars today and you get back to the same position the next year because you have to become somebody else. You totally have to transform yourself into becoming a whole different person 
somebody that will know what to do with a million dollars. And that's only, the only thing that it takes is your thoughts. To believe that you can handle a million. Believe you can make a million. But if you don't believe, you cannot be creative. Your creativity is only met with your belief. Your creativity cannot go beyond your belief. Literally. Your creativity cannot go beyond your belief. So you need to learn to be... <laughs> you need to learn to be more faithful so that you can be more creative. When you're more faithful, you, you become more creative. So any problem that comes your way, you think of a solution. You think of the easiest way to make your life more comfortable for you. Not for anybody else, not for pleasing others, not for pleasing people. For you, you become more more confident in who you are. Not shaping your reality to please people around you. That's when you set yourself free. And you become more creative when you realize nothing can stop you because every situation that comes up, you solve it creatively. You listen to your intuition, you don't listen to fear. So, this video is a big shout out to Esther Hicks as well because her books have definitely changed my mindset. Books that I've read over and over again multiple times and the thing about learning this stuff is that you have to keep learning it and applying it and practicing it because if things like this are drawn to you or you're drawn to things like this it will never leave you it will keep coming back and your self-development is, is crying out to you to focus self-development if it's if, if self-development is looking for you you can't run away from it it will always come back in one way or one form for your awakening, your spiritual awakening is calling you like you wake up. You want to live a better life. You want to live up to your potential. All these books will keep finding you. All these videos will keep finding you. And you can't keep ignoring them. So when you read a book like Esther, Esther Hicks, Ask and It Is Given, it's not once. You have to read it twice. You have to practice it, read it again. I read it over five times probably. So that's just a little background and that's just a book recommendation I can give anybody. So if you want to read a book that will open your mind and give you more of an insight to how to manifest and how to think positively, that's a book recommendation. Right there. That's kind of given by Esther Terry Hicks.